Hello, I'm John Weeks from The Standard, and in this episode of How to Be a CEO, we're talking with Jonathan Raggett, CEO of Red Carnation Hotels. It's an international hotel group designed to offer guests a luxurious, bespoke experience with accommodation in places including the UK, Switzerland and South Africa. So what sort of background do you need as CEO of Red Carnation Hotels to ensure standards remain high? while adapting to continuous sustainability challenges and managing an online reputation. Well, Jonathan's story is one of hard work. Over the years, he's taken on almost every job there is in the hotel sector, working his way up to the top. I did for almost one year, I, I was a night manager in, in, in a busy hotel. And uh, that was probably the hardest job I actually did because uh, sleep deprivation and being able to sleep during the day and then work your days off, you know, it was really quite challenging, I found. And therefore, I think now when I'm up and about early in the mornings or late at night and I'm seeing the people that work in our properties in the night sector, there's an extra respect for knowing they're handling actually what I found really challenging and very difficult. In addition to that, I've cleaned bedrooms. You know, I, I spent six months in a housekeeping department making beds and cleaning lavatories. And, and again, I think having done that, there's a, a greater respect and understanding of the jobs that uh, I'm expecting of our people. So, you know, there isn't a job in the hotel that I can't do. And there probably isn't a job that I do as well as the people in the hotels either. So it's double ended. But um, there is real knowledge. And I think, yeah, it does, it does give me help. And I don't know if this is the right time to bring this in. But on two or three occasions every year, we and the general managers, we go to back to what we call back to the floor. And we'll spend one day in a department and ensure that, you know, we're, again, with the troops, with the, the real people that are making the magic in our hotels. And we're making beds again. We're perhaps cooking a breakfast on a Sunday morning. And we're, we're doing the jobs that are needed within a hotel. And I think, again, it gets respect from the team that are around and understanding that actually, you know, they're one of us. And again, probably jumping a few hurdles forward is that certainly within the hospitality business, I think, any manager needs to really know and understand their people and the roles that they do. And, and is it for that purpose you mentioned there of managers, you know, understanding the jobs that everyone else has to do? I think they understand it because they've all done that. But I think it's, again, it's, it's an understanding that, you know, we'll sit in the restaurants and we'll entertain clients because that's our role. Uh, we'll sit in the lounge and again, we'll be with clients, the prospective clients drinking cappuccinos. And we sit there and that's the role that we need to do. But I think it's great when the team will see you as part of it. You know, I do show rounds to our guest bedrooms and I'll say hello to our housekeeping staff. And they see me as this guy that's walking around in a suit, tie, saying hello. But actually, if I get into the housekeeping department, which I do, and I've got the overalls on and I'm getting stuck in, I think it just, it levels things very nicely. And I think, you know, it's talked about. You know, I can never clean a room as, as quickly as, as our housekeeping staff. And, you know, as a story, uh, it was a couple of years back now. I remember very clearly that uh, I got my 10 rooms to clean and I was there at eight o'clock in the morning and the head housekeeper was a little nervous because you know, I was one of the team in my overalls. And she said to me, look, uh, you know, Jonathan, would you like some help? Can I put someone with you? And I said, no, no, that's not the point. I must do these rooms on my own. So we got to about 10 o'clock and I'd done one room properly, one and a half as it was. And um, the housekeeping staff said, right, we go for a coffee break now. So I said where we were. And they'd all cleaned four rooms and I was still, you know, one and a half rooms in. But it was good because, you know, it brought a smile of fun. We sat in the staff canteen and we went back to our rooms and uh, it was all very good. And there was a little learning process, actually. We went for lunch several hours later and I'd cleaned probably four or so rooms by then. I wasn't halfway. And I'd almost finished my final room. And the, the housekeeper, the checker, said to me, um, it is time for lunch now. There's no real need to get the room immediately back. So come and have lunch and then come back and finish this room. So I went back after my lunch and was finishing the room off. And um, two guests walked in and I said, oh, I think there's, there's been a mistake here. I'm so sorry. The room's not ready yet. And uh, the guest turned around to me and said, um, I don't think you understand, young man. I said, okay, well, what don't I understand? 
She said, the reception team downstairs have just given us a late checkout. So we're coming back to the room we were occupying. So I said, oh, I'm very sorry, here's the room and I got out. But you know, it was a real good learning message again about communication in a hotel that it's very easy for a front desk to say, yes, of course you can keep your room longer, but clearly you've got a liaise with the housekeeping department. So it brings into play a whole lot of things. So yeah, I dine out on being um, a young man that doesn't understand quite quite a lot. <laughs> it's nice to be. It's actually quite nice, John, to be called young. Yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, it's character building, isn't it? As well, that kind of experience. Yeah, but it's what my team go through. You see, and this is the point that you know, I don't ever be aloof to it. You know, it's it's a tough business. This is a business that I love. You know, and uh, you have to love this business, I think, because it's a different, difficult one to fake if, you, if you're doing it and, and not liking it. But, um, you know, people's expectations are really high. People want more and more, and rightly so, they're paying a lot of money, but you, you need exceptional people working within your team and an understanding of that. So, yeah, it is character building but, but from all sides. Over your years, Jonathan, what do you think is the, the most significant change you've seen in the hospitality industry? Well, yeah, there are so many things that have changed. I think one thing now, quite ironically, is that I used to always really enjoy receiving uh, a letter from a guest about a wonderful stay that they'd had. It was always really rewarding. Now I'm always upset to get the letter because I want them to ignore the letter itself and I want them to go out on social media. I would much rather somebody go and tell a million people on something like a TripAdvisor or similar and get out there. And I think today the world has become much more transparent when you do mess things up, which every hotel, restaurant, bar does on occasions. You used to be able to kind of maintain the issues within and make good. And, you know, clearly they would tell a few friends potentially what went wrong if you didn't correct it properly. You know, but today, mess things up and it literally can go to thousands, even millions of people. So I think, you know, the idea that uh, you've got to get things right has, has, has definitely changed. And, you know, the beauty behind that, which we work hard at, is in life, I think when things go wrong, people tend to exaggerate by about 20%. So, you know, the wait wasn't 20 minutes for the main course, it was half an hour, because you just get in that mode of exaggeration. But on the flip side, when you do things really well, people tend to exaggerate as well about how good it is. So I think, you know, in, in, in life I've seen, you know, that this whole idea now of exceeding those expectations, getting people on your side has never been greater because of the power of social and people getting out there. So that's, that's been one change, you know, amongst many, many over the years I've been in this business. And as you mentioned, obviously, the likes of TripAdvisor, it is a double edged sword because if it goes down badly, then lots of people see it. If it goes down well, lots of people see it. Do you sort of it seems like you sort of use it more as a, a motivation to get things more right than, you know, a frustration? No, I mean, one has to definitely embrace it. I mean, it's not going away. And I think statistics are something like three out of four people will go to some social media site to check before they book a property, um, a holiday or wherever they're going. So, you know, let's not ignore it. Let's be on side. But it comes back and it's a good thing to make sure that hotels are doing a great job and consistency. And certainly, one of the things I'm probably the most proud of within the organization that I run is that we have huge longevity of staff within our teams. Our training and development is as good as any hotel company there is in the world. It would be as strong as that. It's the real cornerstone of what we do. We really motivate our teams to give the very best they can. And we give everybody in the business an opportunity to grow. So if you come into our operation in a position of, of a waiter, let's say, um, and, and your ambition is to be a restaurant manager, we're going to get you there if you show the same uh, willingness. And if from restaurant manager you want to work your way up to general manager, then again, we're going to give you the opportunity, giving people that chance. And certainly within the organization of Red Carnation, we have dozens and dozens of people that have started in X position and today in Y position, and we've given them the confidence, I think confidence is a big thing here, but the training, the skill sets to get to where they are today. And of course, they then have the culture of what we are, that whole DNA runs through. 
It also means that when you start in the company or within the company, you go, hey, look, such and such has moved from this position to that position. This company genuinely does care. And therefore, that generates a real positive attitude from yourself to go on and, and, and get to where you are. And, and for some people in our industry, they want to be a waiter, they want to be a receptionist, and thank goodness, and they can be fantastic at that. But I think if people do want to grow and they want a, a management position, then we're very much for doing that. And there's real spin-off for that, because like I say, you get all that uh, motivation from your team for it. Let's go to the ads now. We'll be back after these. Another sort of significant change, particularly for hospitality and travel over probably really the last five to ten years, is this focus on sustainability. How significant do you think that change has been and how easy or difficult have you found making things more sustainable? Yeah, well, I think, you know, we've all got responsibility today to be as sustainable as we possibly can. And certainly at Red Carnation, we do take this subject very seriously. We do have guests, we do have that choose our collection of hotels because of our sustainability and what we do. And I'll be happy to share some of those with you. I think equally so, and I think it's particularly in young people, it's a great recruitment tool as well, because I think young people want to be coming into a company that actually uh, is seen and actually doing something for it. So we measure our food waste. So we know exactly what we're throwing away. We have a system which has a camera and the weight and every day we know what we're throwing away. And then from that, we adjust what we're buying and we see how we can reduce our food wastage. And we've dropped it by some 38% since we've had this system in and we continue to learn and become better. We removed single use plastics from our hotels a long, long time ago. It's, it's very easy to do nothing and just put your head into the in some hole and not come out of it. But we know that, again, it's a massive part of what we do. And there's a whole string of things we do. So I think the whole sustainability is something we work very hard on. Hotels will never be perfect. I mean, again, we try and... Uh, ask our guests to use towels for a two night stay to use them again. But I think what we do do there, which a lot of hotels don't, is that we contribute, if, if guests on side and, and they want to be part of us, we contribute a pound to the Starlight Foundation and, Orm- and Great Ormond Street Hospital. We, we put that in as a company for the savings that we do make. And during my tenure, we're well over a million pounds that we've given to those two charities by asking our guests not to have a towel wash. So that's recorded and that's properly done. And again, I think it's it's a giving back and again, something that so many people within our teams, perhaps more than guests, more than guests actually genuinely like. And then we'll have some of our staff, our team members that are interested to go to Great Ormond Street Hospital and they'll see just how privileged and how lucky we are as people not to have many of the issues that sadly these young people have. So it sounds like you're quite at the forefront, really, of the the sort of the top end of sustainable practices for a hotel. And I was interested, you mentioned at the start, there were guests that come almost specifically for your sort of green credentials. What what do those guests say to you? What is it do you think that they're sort of really appreciating based on what you do? We attract the high net worth traveller. And we'll have many families come across with children. And I think a lot of people now in that position are looking to come and have a lovely vacation, a luxurious vacation. But they want to also be perhaps educating and their children seeing and even themselves, a little bit more from than the, the best Egyptian cotton to the very finest coffee. They, they were, what's in the real world? So we put together these what we call make travel matter experiences. And we'll have guests come through, and there's a whole choice there. They're on the Red Carnation website. But one of the very popular ones that we do is that here in London, is we'll, we'll take our, our head chef or a senior chef, we'll take a family, children, adults, to somewhere like Borough Markets and they'll meet the people that produce the produce they're selling there at Borough Market. They'll then buy the ingredients with the children. And, you know, 
odd as it may sound, I think there are so many children out there now that think carrots come from a supermarket. They don't actually even know where they come from. So there'll be a bit of an education as to where this has come from. They'll buy the food there. They'll come back to the hotel. And then with the ingredients they bought and the right amount of ingredients, they'll cook a lunch or a dinner from there. And I think it almost makes it a 360 type experience because you're helping the person that has clearly brought these products to the market. It's the education of it. You paid for those and you go back and eat it. So I think today, you know, we have people coming to our hotels with the many experiences such as that, that we do offer. So in your role, Jonathan, when it comes to sort of changing things up, progressing, trying to sort of push the business on, how do you go about doing that? What sort of avenues do you like to go down or think to go down? Is going eco or more eco the best way of doing that? What's your sort of thought process? I think in hospitality, the best way about going about it is to make sure that uh, you exceed guest expectations. I think that is what I work really hard on. And that is done by having a great team of people. And the best way to get new business and repeat business is to consistently offer service, food, quality that people come back from. That That is the number one in our business. If you can add to that, as we do, something called TNTs. These are tiny, noticeable touches. And we try and find out in advance for a new guest what their likes or dislikes are. And we will try and create something that is particular for that guest. So, I mean, there are, again, there are, there are millions of examples of, of what might may be liked. But, you know, if somebody enjoys their favourite fruit are strawberries in the summer, what better way to have a nice bowl of strawberries for them? And it hasn't really cost us very much, but it's us understanding what the guest wants. And then once you've stayed in our properties, we work very hard to try and get guest preferences. And so for a repeat stay, we'll understand a little bit more about what you like. And even walking into a uh, into one of our hotel bars and knowing that you like a Pacific or a gin as opposed to another and us knowing it before you're asking for it. These are the things that guests really like. So I think... That is number one. I think the eco, the sustainability is an important factor, but I think the consistency and then making sure that it's, it's, it's not a one shoe fits all. This is about understanding what you like might not be what I like and trying to fit that around. And we empower our staff. We, we, we allow any of our staff to spend £20 on any guest to make their stay a better one. And again, I don't have my accounting team probing it and questioning it. We trust our teams that they're gonna be spending that amount of money to make that guest stay a better one. So I think, again, you're in it with your team, as I've said already, to make sure that we're really getting more and more raving fans within our business. And, you know, is it working? I believe it is because our repeat factor is as high as any I know. In some of our hotels, it's higher than 70%. So we get a lot of guests that come back time and time again. And coupled with that, guests are coming to us because such and such has recommended it. We all know that if a friend of yours comes to you and says, that restaurant was absolutely fantastic. The food, the service, unbelievable. What are you wanting to do? You wanted to go and try it. And it's the same with a hotel bar experience. You know, that's what we really work hard on it. You know, we never, ever, ever feel we've reached the summit. We're always working hard to get there. And you're as good as your last day. I mean, when, when I finish this evening and go home and get into bed, I wake up and I'm starting again. It's, it's not a case of it's done. It's each day you've got to be on it. And just talking to you, Jonathan, you can tell how much passion you've got for your job for the industry as a whole. For anyone listening, any sort of entrepreneurs listening and, and hoping to one day become a CEO of anything, would, is that your advice to, to go into something that you really care about? I'm real living proof of this, that I have got to where I am through, I think, being kind. I think you've got to care. I think you've got to have a very good work ethic. Um, you've certainly got to understand people. I think the, the understanding of people, both guests and, and team, is really important. And 
I think they're the ingredients. And, and, and this, and I say, I go to universities, I, I go to colleges, I go to schools. I explain to people that in this business, you really can reach the top if you've got those kind of traits. That was Jonathan Raggett from Red Carnation Hotels. You can get more interviews, news and analysis from the Evening Standards business team at standard.co.uk forward slash business.